Hi everyone, Brian from Sui Generis Brewing here, and welcome to episode 3 of the 2024 version of the 50 Meter Beer Project. I apologize for how long it's been to get this video out. Uh, this summer has been absolutely insane. Uh, between work, stuff going on here on the farm, uh, I've been in and out of the hospital due to some problems with my shoulders. It's just been crazy. Uh, but we're here today uh, between rainstorms. Hopefully we can finish this before the next one comes and I'll give you the update on what's been going on. And quite a bit has gone on since the last video. The last video we were just getting close to harvest with the barley. We are now well past that point. So the barley that I'm growing is a, a variety called bear barley. It is a variety that dates back uh, more than 1200 years. In fact, some recent studies have shown that it's essentially the same as some of the barley that was being grown in the Paleolithic period uh, in some of the uh, Scandinavian countries. So it's a very, very old variety of barley that just happened to get preserved on a few islands around Scotland, up in the Shetlands, places like that. Uh, so we've been able to grow here in Ontario, even though it's not really the ideal climate for it, um, but we've got pretty good growth. Uh, there was one section of the field, I showed this in the last video, where the growth was kind of stunted. I don't, still don't know what's going on with that patch of soil, um, but the rest of it did really quite well. On harvest day, I thought it would be fun to try and harvest my, you know, 1200 year old barley with a roughly 1200 year old technology, uh, that being a size. Turns out, size are very difficult to find in a functional form. Uh, you can find lots of them for your Halloween costumes or for wall hangers, uh, but size that are actually meant for cutting grass are few and far between. Uh, so I had to go with its little baby brother, uh, the sickle. And uh, the sickle, you know, it was it was an interesting way to harvest barley, let's say that. Uh, you know, for the first 30 seconds to a minute, I was really kind of living my ancestors past and enjoying, you know, the physicality of, of using the sharp and curved uh, metal object to cut the barley. Uh, but it got old pretty fast. And let's just say that farmers have mechanized for a very good reason. Uh, by the time I finished harvesting the barley, I could barely stand. My back was shot. My shoulders were shot. It was hell. Uh, so I've done it once. I will never do it again. Uh, but it was kind of an, an interesting thing to try. Now, one thing I did learn about my sickle after I used it was I bought the wrong kind. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but my sickle has a serrated edge. That's really meant for larger plants, um, things like bamboo or large vines. It's not really meant for grains. And in fact, a lot of the time when I went to cut, instead of cutting, we just kind of grab on to the barley and pull the roots out of the soil. So a proper sickle for the job should have had a nice smooth edge and been quite razor sharp. Uh, but unfortunately mine wasn't and I'm not going to do that again. So I'm not going to replace this sickle with a better one. Once the barley was harvested, of course, the next step is threshing, which is getting the grain off of the barley. Now, I had grand plans this year of how to do this. Um, threshing technology is quite old, uh, and really all you need is a rotating drum with sort of finger sticking out of it that will literally clobber the grain off of the stalks. And so my hope was I could cut the grain down with the sickle and then immediately feed it into a homemade threshing machine to strip the grain off. And, you know, I, I got a motor to run the thing. I have most of it designed in CAD, but one of the downsides or perhaps upsides of this old variety of barley is it is very rapid growing and very rapidly maturing. And so because of that, I just didn't have time, especially with everything else going on this summer, to finish that thresher before it was time to harvest. Uh, so instead I ended up doing what I did last year. I cut all the barley down, bundled it up, and I then would cut the heads off with scissors uh, and then process those heads. Now I did want to try and find an easier way to process the barley, even though my attempt at making a mechanized thresher wasn't successful. And so my first attempt was to use a technique uh, developed, or at least I learned from, uh, by Alistair, who's on Instagram as Beer in the Attic. And what he does is he basically has a six millimeter steel screen. Uh, in my case, I installed it in the bucket. His, I think he just has more in a wooden frame. And you basically rub the barley heads on the metal. And what that does is it, first of all, will break the kernels off of the stem. 
but it'll also break the beard off of the kernel, so the kernels fall through, but the stem and those beards are too long to pass through the screen, and so they stay uh, on top, or you can brush them off. It works really, really good in his hands using modern varieties of barley. It did not work with my 1,200-year-old uh, strain of bear. And the reason it didn't work was the first part was perfectly fine. You'd rub the barley heads on the screen, the kernels would come off, and they were well separated. But where it failed is that the beard on these ancient grains is much heavier and thicker and more strongly attached to the kernel than it is in modern varieties. That's one thing that they bred for in modern varieties is for that to come off more easily. And so it didn't matter how hard I rubbed, uh, it just would not push the grain through, it wouldn't take off that beard. So, uh, as well as this system works uh, for more modern varieties, it was a dismal failure for my ancient variety of barley. And so unfortunately, I had to go back to last year's technique of basically taking a chain, putting it on the end of a metal rod, putting it in a bucket with a drill, and basically the chain spins and knocks the kernels off, and it's enough force, it'll also break the beard off as well. So it's a lot of work, a lot of processing, takes an awful lot of time, but in the end, it works. But while it works, it has a definite limitation. And that limitation is that everything is in that bucket after you run your drill. The kernels are there, but the fragments of beard are still there. The stems are still there. Any of the straw that gets in is still there. So you have a real mixed bucket of stuff that you now need to purify. One of the advantages of Alistair's approach is a lot of the material doesn't go through the screen, and if you use a finer screen, you can also sift out a lot of the finer material. So in essentially one step, you get relatively clean barley. Whereas this bucket method using the drill, it's just a hodgepodge, half or more of what's there is instead all this other crap that you now need to get rid of. So the way you get rid of this is through something called winnowing. Now, last year when I did this, I just set up a fan and I literally poured the grain from one bucket to another, back and forth multiple times, relying on the fan to blow away all of the non-grain material. Now this works um, because the grain is quite a bit heavier than everything else, and so or quite a bit denser than everything else, so it all falls through the airstream, whereas all the debris gets pushed out. But it's also not a very efficient way of doing it. And the reason why is small differences in how close the barrel is to the fan can affect how well it works. If you're too close, now everything gets blown away. If you're too far away, now nothing's getting blown away. And so hitting that sweet spot is quite hard. The other problem with it is if you pour too fast, it essentially shields itself. And so not much material gets removed. So it works, but it's inefficient. I had to put a tarp down on the ground in order to capture all the grain that was getting blown uh, so that I could reprocess it to try and clean it up and collect it. And so this year I tried to come up with a better system and as gimmicky as this thing looks, it worked perfectly. I was really happy with how this worked. And the way this is, this is set up is very simple. I have a blower down on the bottom blowing air. Above it I have essentially a, a feeder tube, which is just a piece of sewer pipe with a funnel on top just to help direct the grain in. And the idea here is really simple. Uh, the tube gives the grain and chaff a chance to start falling. The grain will pick up more speed because it's denser, so it'll cut through the air better. Um, but it makes sure that everything that's coming out the bottom comes out at essentially a consistent speed, right? The grain's going to fall and accelerate to whatever point it does. All the chaff and debris is going to fall and accelerate to roughly the same point. So everything entering that airstream from the fan is traveling at roughly the same speed. The fan is then going to blow just through a fairly narrow region, all of the loose material or debris away, and the grains will fall through into the bucket. And I was really impressed that essentially in a single round of cleaning, I got my grain as clean as multiple rounds last year. So actually the, the grain I got through the, just the first time passing the grain through the system was cleaner than the grain I started malting last year. And I ran it through uh, this system twice to really get it clean. And I, this is the cleanest barley I've ever had. I'm really happy with how the system works. It's a little gimmicky and kind of set up in a, in a pretty rough and loose way, but it worked really, really well. 
And so I have here, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to show this on screen, uh, my bucket of processed barley. And I have, uh, this year, six kilos, which is quite a bit. Uh, that's way more than I had last year. Now, six kilos of grain is, if it were malt, enough to do a decent batch of beer, decent five gallon batch of beer. Uh, but in my case, I'm going to keep half a kilo for planting next year. And when you malt, you lose about 15% of that weight. Some of that weight does get lost during the malting process. Um, so what I'm really sitting on here is closer to five kilos of grain, which would still be enough for uh, at least one good brew day. Now, obviously I still need to malt this. So we're a ways away from that. Um, and one problem with these ancient varieties of barley is they have what's called a dormancy period. And it's basically about a two to three month long period of time uh, after they seed where that seed will not dry. And in nature, this makes perfect sense because you don't want your grain to drop its seeds on the ground in fall, have a warm fall day and start to sprout because now it's gonna get killed off by winter. So dormancy ensures that those grains will not sprout until after winter has passed. For malting, it's not desired because you have to wait before you can mulch your grain. And so again, modern varieties, this particular feature has been bred out of them. You can mulch them the day you harvest them. I'm gonna to have to wait till September, maybe even early October, before I'll be able to start mulching my barley. But that's okay, because as you can see behind me, the hops are a little behind where they were last year. So last year we had a very dry, very hot summer. This summer we've had a very hot summer, but it's been very wet. And something about that moisture has really stunted kind of the progress of these hops. Now, they are starting to look pretty good here. I don't know how well you can see that. They're starting to look like hot cones. But just a week ago, when we left uh, to go up to our cottage, they were still at that flower stage where they look like tiny little flowers. They hadn't really started forming into cones. So almost all of this cone development has happened in the past seven or eight days. Uh, still have a long ways to go. There's no root in them yet. Um, but it looks like we're going to be up for a decent uh, hop harvest this year. Now, my shoulder is completely screwed up. I have no feeling in my hands. I have trouble lifting my arm higher than that. Uh, so I don't know how I'm going to harvest these things. Hopefully by the time they're ready, I'm a little bit better. Um, but the good news is if I only get a partial harvest out of this, I actually still have hops left from last year. So it wouldn't be the end of the world if half of these went uh, to the goats instead of to the brewery. So we are doing fairly well this year with the uh, 50 meter beer project. Great barley harvest, minus uh, my silly decision to use a sickle. Um, Ops are coming along well. I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to brew. I'm kind of torn between two different things. Because I'm growing this ancient grain, that is what my Norwegian ancestors probably would have used to have made beer a thousand years ago. Part of me is tempted to make sort of a farmhouse Norwegian style beer, you know, a malt hall or something like that using Kvike yeast, um, those sorts of things. Maybe even going crazy and doing a, a stone beer brew where you use heated stones to boil the mash. But that kind of breaks the 50 meter theme because, of course, that Kvike at least is not going to be coming from the farm, it's going to be coming from Norway, which is quite a ways away from here, a little more than 50 meters. The other thing I've been thinking of doing is a spontaneous fermentation, so sort of a Lambic style uh, beer. Now that, of course, is going to be a wild capture of all the bacteria and yeast that will ultimately ferment that beer. It should produce a really fantastic sour beer. I've had a lot of really good success with wild captures, uh, you know, cool ship style brewing here on the farm. But the downside to that is that's an 18 month, if not longer, fermentation. Uh, and so I would be wrapping up the video series in, you know, a year and a half rather than in December. Uh, so, you know, if anyone has any suggestions, I'm open to it. Uh, you know, last year I isolated a pure strain of wild yeast and I used that to ferment the beer. I don't really want to do that again. I want to try something different. So I'm, not, I'm still not too sure what I'm going to do. Anyways, that's the update. Uh, thank you again for joining me. Uh, the next update will probably be in about a month. I imagine that's about how long it's going to be till the hops are done. Uh, so until then, I'm Brian. 
Thanks again for joining me, and we'll see you next time.